What happened on Friday in Leon C, next door to South End, was truly horrendous and a big shock to everybody. A shock to everybody involved in politics and current affairs, a shock to the country. Uh, Sir David Amos, somebody that I knew not well, but I knew and met many times and was just the most jolly, happy man that loved being a member of Parliament, uh, believed in his causes passionately, uh, believed in his constituency, uh, not somebody that ever wanted to climb the greasy pole of politics. He was happy being a backbencher. In a way, he's sort of redolent of the old days of politics, when people went into it almost as if they wanted to give more back to politics than they wanted to take out of it. So what happened to him was horrendous. It was a political assassination. That's not a word that anybody else is using, but that's the truth of what happened. I'm concerned that some people are drawing the wrong conclusion. But before I get to that, let's listen to Boris Johnson, Prime Minister in the House of Commons, paying tribute today. Sir David was taken from us in a contemptible act of violence, striking at the core of what it is to be a member of this House and violating the sanctity both of the church in which he was killed and the constituency surgery that is so essential to our representative democracy. But we will not allow the manner of Sir David's death in any way to detract from his accomplishments as a politician or as a human being. Because Sir David was a patriot who believed passionately in this country, in its people, in its future. He was also one of the nicest, kindest and most gentle individuals ever to grace these benches. As it is only a short time since Sir David last put that very case to me in this chamber, I am happy to announce that Her Majesty has agreed that South End will be accorded the city status it so clearly deserves. Well, that's one piece of good news, because David Amos had campaigned for South End to have city status, and that will now posthumously happen in his honour. But what's disturbed me ever since Friday is the analysis. We're told by a variety of media commentators, journalists and indeed members of Parliament that this is all because of the tough, aggressive narrative that exists within politics. We're being urged to move towards a gentler, kinder type of politics. Indeed, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, actually tweeted, I'm deeply saddened by the tragic news that Sir David has passed away. No, Sadiq Khan. This is not a 98-year-old D-Day veteran that died in his sleep. This is somebody that was brutally assaulted, stabbed 17 times and died directly as a result of it. And we're all dancing around handbags here without anybody really wanting to call it what it is. This was an act of Islamic terrorism. At least that's what the police say they're investigating. And the prime suspect in this case is somebody who was sent to the Prevent programme six years ago uh, because a teacher had, had really thought this man could become a serious jihadi. I've been astonished by two things out of all of this. The first is that those that go through the Prevent programme, their details and data are not passed on to the security services, are not passed on to the police for databases. And, yes, I know there are human rights objections to individuals' names being passed on to those databases. Well, what about the human rights of David Amos and his family? And the other debate that fascinates me is how do we manage to have members of Parliament continuing to be public-facing, continuing to go on meeting their constituents? Because this is the third attack in 20 years that has happened in an MP's surgery. I've heard ludicrous ideas, such as police officers should stand outside when MPs have surgeries. We don't have the slack in the police force. My suggestion is there are hundreds of people who fought in Iraq, who fought in Afghanistan, who are used to dealing with terrorist threats, also used to dealing with the civilian public, and I think they could be trained. I do not think any MP from now on 
should go out at a pre-arranged public event, whether it's in a street or in a surgery, without some level of security. And I say that as somebody that lived this life for seven or eight years. I was surrounded by private security for those years. And even then, people did break through the crowd and throw things at me or break eggs over my head or whatever it was. But one thing for certain, with private security, I would never have been stabbed 17 times. Once, possibly, but certainly not 17 times. So that's what I want to see. But why are we not calling this out for what it really is? This is an act of Islamic terrorism. And the problem is, we can't just write this off as being one extremist nut job, because this is an ideology that has roots in this country. Even if the adherents of it are just a few thousand, it's enough to worry us and the whole democratic process. We need to have a proper, honest debate.